Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. Um, we have another mailbag item to have a look at. Don't worry, soon we'll be getting back to electronics and projects and things like that as well. But uh, I'd like to just review this first. This is sent to us by Kaiwu and it is a Tycoon 3D printer. Interested in this one because it looks like it is a lot more robust than anything that I have reviewed in the past. I know it's been quite a few years since I've reviewed a 3D printer, but I've done upgrades and things like that since. So anyway, it's supposed to be quite quick to set up. This is the box it came in. It was shipped to me from a Canadian warehouse, which was nice. It's not everything I get sent to me comes from a local warehouse, so it made it much quicker to get and no duties and all that other stuff to worry about because it was already in the country. Let's just have a quick look at the website. Um, just so I can show you the model that I have here and then we'll open it up review the parts get it built and do a test print So before we unbox this is their website um, They have basically three different models of 3d printer plus a whole bunch of accessories They have the tycoon 3d printer, which is the one that I have here in this box So you can see very robust frame uh, glass build plate uh, extruder, print holder, carry handles, uh, all the electronics contained within a integrated metal shroud on here as well. Uh, touch screen, and I believe it has a DL touch as well included. Now this is a little more expensive than a lot of other printers that I've uh, looked at in the past. This is $616 at the moment. Uh, that's US dollars. So it is a little more expensive, but if it works and looks the way it does on the website then I think you might agree that it may well be worth it now they also do sell other printers so the printing surface on this one is 240 by 240 by 230 so almost a cube the Tycoon Max is basically the same printer but uh, just bigger print surface which has 300 by 300 by 230 and they also have the IDX 3D printer as well which is a Max but with dual print heads. Uh, it's got a 32-bit silent main board. Now by silent, that's what people normally mean when they have Trinamic drivers, and it confirms here that we're using a TMC2208 uh, set of drivers on here, so it should be very quiet. And we have a touchscreen with nine languages, uh, color touchscreen as the control interface. So, looks like we're in for a treat. Anyway, a little bit of assembly is required before we can get to a test print. So let's pull out the box and get started. Okay, I'm standing up here right now because it's a big box. So let's get in here. I have not, uh, aside from cutting the tape, I haven't been in here yet. So let's get in and see what we have. Uh, that might cut me off a little bit for the moment. So we have a user manual, lots of details, so we'll go through that in a moment. Uh, on the top we have the glass build plate. Looks like it's textured. Yep. And obviously smooth glass on the other side. So there's our build plate. All right, so first thing we're faced with is the main gantry. Well, I guess a small roll of sample filament. Always nice to have. A box of accessories. Let's pull this out. See what's in here. Okay, so filament holder, cutters, etc. So we'll go through that as we are doing the build, I'm assuming. So rip the foam out. Now, deep down in here, we have the base unit. Right here, nice, 
uh, ball races, build plate, a few little scuffs on it, but nothing untoward. Build plate is actually solidly mounted, no, no springs or screws or anything, and being with a BL touch, um, auto bed leveling, you really shouldn't need anything. Stepper motor at the front here. See that up here? Um, one, two, three, four. Linear ball, power connection for the heat, bed, and thermistor. Uh, belt already connected. End stop to rubber feet already attached. So that's the base. And we get a North American style power connection, which is good. So let's get this box out of the way. Okay, let's do a few initial observations here, shall we? So it's not running on V wheels like all the other 3D printers are on. It's got rods with ball races, so linear rails in here, which is really nice. Still belt driven, but that's fine. That gives you a low send, uh, inertia for accelerating and printing. But the ball races give you a much more solid. Uh, run no adjustments necessary if you've got uh, V rails which could go in these these the actual aluminum the actual extrusions on here are V rail so you could use wheels on some parts of this if you wanted to but they've gone the extra mile and put in the linear bearings which is very very nice um, I don't see any shards of aluminum anywhere from cutting and manufacturing. Uh, bits of grease around where they've put some silicon grease on the bearings and things. The underside of the heated bed is insulated, which is nice to see. Um, the bed itself is eight screws holding it down solidly with spaces from the um, bottom mechanics. We have our end stop at the end here. A um, few places for mounting screws and things to go in. Uh, machining looks pretty good. Pretty robust rubber feet, and the mounts all look nice. Stepper motors are standard NEMA 17s, which is what you expect these days with a 3D printer. Uh, well, the minimum anyway, especially for this size. So let's get that out of the way, and we'll have a quick look at the gantry section for the moment. Then we'll bring it back up to assemble it. Okay, so here is the gantry section. Go, sorry, desk is a little cluttered. So this is all metal enclosure. We've got 2020 extrusions on the top and the bottom. They're a good five inches apart at least. I don't have a ruler to hand, but you can see here it's quite substantial. Um, 2040 extrusions front to back on the left and right side. So you can see we've got our standard Acme screw for our Z axis. Um, we have springy couplers here. Now that's one of the things that they talked to me about in that they've changed these couplers to solid ones because these things, they have actually stretched out quite considerably. And that one, you can see it's stretched out and not very good. They've changed these so they didn't have it changed yet in the one that I've got. And if you look in this one, so you can see that coupler is quite stretched as well. So these need to come out and we need to put in um, the solid couplers, which they sent me. So that will be the first thing we do once we get this set up is replace those. Uh, now I'm looking down in here. And what I can see, obviously we've got our LCD display on the front. So what do we have in here? We have our power supply down here, as you can see at the back. It is a genuine mean well, which is nice to see. Yep, genuine mean well is always good. And it looks like 350 watt, 24 volts. So we have a 24 volt system here. Controller board mounted up. I don't know if you can see that there. Yep. Controller board is mounted up on the top here. 
in here. It does have a Wi-Fi module in. Looks like an ESP8266 um, type of Wi-Fi module. LCD displays on the front. Big thick ribbon cable running up. Not, not one of these ones with the two ribbon cables, just one bigger ribbon cable. Cable management looked quite nice, considering it's not using any of the solid cable tray. Now, let's have a look at the nozzle assembly here. So it has a silicone sock on. We have a fan at the back here for part cooling blowing onto the front. Cute little knob on the stepper motor so you can see it moving or manually advance yourself. We have what looks like a BL touch. I can't see the label, it's on the inside. So I don't know if it's a BL touch or a clone. We do have a actual and your rail, a uh, flat one, of course, which will give us much better. So all in all, paint job looks quite nice. No scratches, no nothing. So obviously it's uh, fared well in QA construction and shipping. Looking at the bottom, two stepper motors. This oh, it's got two. That's interesting. I'll try to show you here. Even though it has two stepper motors, one, two. For the z-axis it actually has a belt coupling them so you've got twice the drive because you've got two stepper motors but they're coupled together so you should never get any twist of the gantry um, due to gravity or you know some weight on one side and not the other causing the gantry to uh, tilt relative to the bed it should stay flat which is really really nice um, a lot of machines will have one stepper motor in um, for instance, my TiVo Black Widow has one Z-axis stepper, and then it uses a pulley to drive the other axis. Um, in this case, you've got two separate stepper motors, which is nice to see. Uh, cables for all the connections. I think that's pretty much it. I don't know if it comes in other colors. It probably doesn't, but that's okay. So I guess the next thing now is to assemble it. But before we do that, let's have a look at some of the accessories that come with it as well. So here's our accessory box. We already had a quick look through. So we've got two feet, which will be needed. Obviously the two on the back piece are already mounted. That's for our filament holder. So standard pair of cutters. Scraper with a sharpened edge to make it easier to get things off the print bed. The ones with a flat edge are not very good because you have to basically bash things. Um, bulldog, bulldog clips for clamping the glass bed down. And another bag with tools in and some screws. I don't know if this is a spare Z stop, but either way, it's there. We have a Acupuncture needle, which is good for cleaning out the point. Well, I call it an acupuncture needle, but uh, it's for cleaning out the printhead if you get a blockage. Uh, you can shove it up the nozzle. A uh, little screwdriver, a uh, little wrench. These are not very good for much. You can't get any pressure on them, but anyway, they're provided. Looks like a couple of tensioners for. Um, belts. I'm not actually sure if I like these kind of tensioners on the belt because they can cause a bit of spring which you don't want. I'd rather have the belt tight than be relying on a spring to keep the tension there. Looks like you have a spare nozzle. Uh, is that 0.4 as well? Does it even say? No, but it looks like 0.4. And we have a little USB lead. We have a SD, USB SD card. We're going to have a test print on, which will be nice. Uh, 8 gig card. A little bit of PTFE, probably for the, it's probably got a liner inside the nozzle. So there's a piece of spare PTFE, uh, PTFE tube for that. Let's just put these pieces in here for the moment. Some cable clips, which we'll need once we've assembled this, probably. These belts actually look like they're pretty taught already so I'm not going to add those yet but we'll see what the manual says for assembly 
So we have a total of, wow, two, four, five bolts. And I think one of those might be a spare. Okay, let's get these Allen keys out of the way. I have to tip this up this way is what it says. Right, with the feet towards us. Nice to see that sliding nicely. So this is going to let's get these wires out the way. This is going to go in here. Okay, let's just leave that gently sitting there. Let's be the biggest Allen key. I'm sure none of the cables are caught in anything, and they're not. Don't want to clamp down and break them. So now we'll nip up these screws. Now, you should be able to set it back up. And it's sitting upright. Now we've got two feet to put in here. Which looks like they screw in the back. Tells you to put the base on first before you screw these in. Obviously, you're not going to get it through the hole unless you have the base in there first. If you put the feet on, you're not going to feed it through because until you power it up, you can't move the gantry. At least, not easily, anyway. Okay, they're both in. All right, so here's the Z axis cable. You can come underneath or we could go over the top. If you go over the top, yes, that should be fine. You only go in one way because they're keyed and they're also labeled. Sorry, they're not the Z axis, the Y axis. We'll plug in there. This is power connection for the bed here. So we'll just plug those two together. This is pretty intuitive. I'm not reading the manual for this. And we have the thermistor connection right there. We have a end stop, which is going to go all the way over here. Um, the end stop sitting up here. So let's just plug that in. That's done. So those are the only wires that are laying loose down the bottom. Let's get that up again. And there we go. That's probably all of 10 minutes or something. I think if I wasn't doing it under a camera, it would be a lot easier. All right, what I've done is I just added the glass plate, took the plastic wrapper off of it clips around the sides to hold it in place 
Um, there is no adjustment of the bed because we've got the BL touch for that. Um, got a row of roll of filament to try something out. We have a USB. It's a micro USB, but I don't think there's a USB port in here. Um, it's not that I can see, nothing on the front, and only on the side is the SD, full size SD card. They send the, an SD card in a micro SD, and they don't send an adapter with it, so I'll have to just go grab an adapter. I guess it's time to turn it on. Let's get the filament out of the packet. It's just a 200 kilogram, 200 kilogram, 200 gram roll to get started with. Which is more than enough. Actually, it's a heck of a lot more than what most companies will provide as a starter. Okay, so before um, we're going to be able to turn this on, if you remember, we have a slight issue, which you can see right there on that side, and it's just as bad on the other side where the couplers. Uh, stretched beyond recognition. The one on the right hand side is even worse, so we have to replace those. Like I said, I will have already been made aware of this issue. They knew about it and they actually told me about it before the printer even arrived. And they sent me a uh, DC power kit, so it's a power down kit for the printer. And this actually arrived a few days after the printer arrived. And they sent me some solid couplers as well in the kit. So this power down kit will do another video on how to install that. For now I'm just going to put it aside. Now, if you end up getting a printer that has those stretch couplers, call up the company. They'll send you some solid couplers to replace them. Um, but if you do see them there, you'll probably find that your bed won't even home properly because the because they're stretched. The whole gantry is going to be too high, and it's just going to hit against end stops before. You, sorry, no, it's going to hit against mechanical stops before it hits the actual end stop by the the uh, bl touch won't be activating okay so i'm pretty much done there so ready to power on for the first time now let's just zoom well leave it out for the moment see what happens so power switches around the back turned it on 
Okay, it sounds good so far. So nothing happening here at the moment. We'll look at the display. So what we've got it's going to be pretty standard for touch, I'd imagine. Maybe better different graphics. So we've got tool settings and printing. Printing, there's nothing plugged in, so no files found. Um, settings, we've got things like language, motors on and off. Um, cost continue, maybe for pause and print, maybe. Fan control, about. So this is type Robin Nano 35, it says, firmware 2.0.3.1. I don't know if this is a Marlin firmware. Um, it may well be. We've got fan control. That's turned on the cooling part fan. Turn it off again. We'll go back. Um, Wi-Fi control. We'll look at that later. Motor is off. And we'll go back again. And in tool, we should have things like preheat, extrusion, move. So move X, Y, Z. We'll make sure they're all going in the right direction. So this should be moving the carriage up. I won't show you, but that's working fine. And down, we go X plus. Yep, X plus is going to the back. Minus Y plus. Sorry, SX plus now. X minus, that's working just fine. So we go back, so we should be able to home this now. So we'll go home, and we'll pick home all. Um, you can home individually as well. Let me just zoom out so you can watch that too. While we do this. And hopefully the BL Touch will catch the plate as we go. So we'll just say all. So that's doing X first. The micro switch is tucked in down there. It's a little bit weird having the homes on the right hand side and on the front instead of the back and left hand side. Now hopefully the BL Touch will pop out. There it is. And hopefully it will hit the bed before anything else does. Glass bed and all. Yep. And we'll do it again just to be sure. A little slower just to make sure the accuracy is there. Okay, so we homed okay. Now before we do any actual trying to print something, let's just verify what's we'll a set of temperature and see what it comes up at. Let's go back and we'll go into preheat. Now we want it preheated anyway um, before you do an auto bed level. There's no actual filament, individual filament. Let's heat the bed somewhere. It is up to temperature though according to this. So let's uh, We'll run an auto bed level anyway, because I still need to do that. So auto bed level. Okay, that's the auto leveling all done. I'm just going to switch to my screen capture a second um, so I can show you what is on the SD card that came with the printer. So let's just switch to there. Capturing, there we go. Alright, so we've got uh, this is the contents of the SD card. We have the instruction manual in English by the look of it. This is probably the assembly guide. Yeah, so that's what we went through already. Here's some 
using the printer. I'm not going to go through every single one of these how to use a printer guides. Um, pretty intuitive. We've got uh, slicing software. What do they provide? Uh, Ultimaker Cura 4.5, so a fairly recent version by the look of it, 2020, end of the year. Um, and Cura instructions for it. We'll try that in the, another video. Uh, installation video. So again, probably what I've just created basically, only that's probably a lot, lot smaller shorter and model files so we have hollow pen holder dice kwu robot nut rotating pen holder screws ship probably a um, benchy would be surprised wi-fi connection description we'll try that as well in another video this one wants to just be get the thing out well actually maybe we'll have a look at it before we go and so what are we going to print? So have a look. This claims that's two hours. That's too long. Auto leveling test. No, we want to actually print something. So how about we'll do the ghost 30 minutes. So 30 minutes isn't too bad. So that's what we'll try printing. I don't know if I have anything to look at that on here. Is it actually in the model files? Ghost? No, it's not. Yeah, let's install the slicing software. This is going to be standard Windows setup so I'm just gonna just belt through it. Yes. Yes. Agree. Agree. 4.5. Next. Install. It shouldn't take too long, I hope. So even though Cura does not directly support the Kaiwu 3D printer, the Tycoon, um, they provided a PDF on installing the printer software, the slicer, which is Cura, and it looks like it is very detailed. Just a scan through, and it's very, very comprehensive. So they recommend using custom SFF printer. So don't pick one of the ones that are already there because it's not in here. Um, obviously put in the name you want, Kaiwu Tycoon or whatever. And then it's showing you the settings to use for various things as well. So I have the software open here. Let's just bring it up uh, at that very place. So we'll go down to custom. FFF printer and we'll call it Tycoon. Next. So size wise we need to use 240, 240, 230 Marlin style code. So 240, 240 230 and Marlin style code and minus 20 minus 10 10 10 240 minus 20 minus 10 10 10 230 Did I put 230 in for the gantry instead of 240 nope should be 230 Gantry height, I think, should be the same. Um, set the filament to 0.4 and then nozzle, sorry, nozzle to 0.4, filament to 1.75. Ah, extruder, yeah, we missed that before. So 0.4, uh, yeah, so that's not set right. 1.75 millimeter filament, and that should close and close. See anyone there? So it's already active. We'll ignore that for the moment. Let's see if we can load that G-code file and see what the ghost looks like. 30 minute. Looks like a little trinket type of thing. Yeah, that'll do to just do a quick test print. 
All right, let's just exit this. We'll go through a lot of this in separate videos anyway. Can I pull the SD card? So let's go back to our camera view. Okay, just gotta plug that in the side. Right here on the side to plug that in. Now, if we go to home, I think that's still just needed to be reinserted. So we want the ghost, and we'll confirm that. It's a 30 minute print. And we haven't loaded filament, so it's catching up on that for us. So we'll just zoom out a little bit. That's the filament detect for you, working a treat. So we'll take our filament here, trim the end, get away from all those manky bits, and we should be able to just drop it through the filament detect, like that, into the nozzle. And it looks like it's printed orange before. There's a test print probably at the, manif at the shop. There's our color coming through nicely. So okay, that's the filament loaded. Ooh, definitely sticks. All right, so we've got filament loaded. So let's pick ghost. Confirm. All right, that's now 210. Waiting for the bed to get up to 55. I'll put the display on for a second so you can see. Focus. There we go. So you can see here it's showing us the Controls, pause, stop, options, it's showing the elapsed time, current temperature 210 for the nozzle, bed's up to 35, it's got to get to 55 before it will start, Z's up a little bit, and what's under options, temperature adjustment, fan adjustments, filament adjustments, speed adjustments, uh, baby step adjustment for the Z height for the bed leveling, uh, etc. Manual control, so we'll just go back and we'll just let it do its thing. So, bed's up to 38, it is warming up. Now, hopefully, this model has been set up for this printer. I don't know whether the zero is good yet or not. There was a um, Z height test print there, but we'll go for it straight for a model. Why not? All right, I'm going to zoom in on the oh, look at the bed for us, so that we can see what's going on. So let's see how good this is out of the box. No Z height adjustments or anything. Looks like it's a little bit away from the bed. But we'll let it do its thing and see how well it does. So it might need a tiny bit of adjustment.
Okay, while it's printing, let's just go back to screen capture a second. Show on the screen cap, it's not getting the right screen there. Um, what I'm looking at is the PDF about using it, setting up Slicer, uh, Cura, sorry, not Slick. And it goes through in quite detail on how to use the Slicer, the effects of some of the settings, the layer height, etc., etc., which is very nice. Uh, infill, wall thicknesses. So it looks like they've gone to a nice bit of effort to put a little how-to guide together. Uh, retraction, you should really not need much retraction at all with this, being a direct drive uh, printer. So here they're showing 7 millimeters. that's more than even my long Bowden 2 printers, so that should be down like 2 or something for a printer like this. And that would also make it run faster. Let's have a look at uh, print times, slicing, that's a bit of a benchy showing there. Saving G codes. And that's everything. So yeah, it's uh, there's plenty of information on the SD card that came with it. And the SD card actually worked this time. I've had printers that come with SDs and the SDs don't even read in a PC at all and couldn't even read in the 3D printer either, which was not a lot of good. Anyway, this is printing nicely still. Let's go back to the print there.
All right, there it is done. That didn't take too long at all. So done, 29 minutes. It said it was a 30 minute. We'll just hit the confirm. And there we go. So the next thing I want to quickly do, we'll have a look at the, actually we'll have a look at the print first. Right here, so it should come off. That'll be cooling now. Yep, slight knock. Oh. First layer looks like it does need a slight adjustment, but uh, overall, that's pretty good. Okay, can't show you setting up my Wi-Fi because I have a very long Wi-Fi password and it won't let me put all the characters in. I will feed that back to the folks at Kaiwu and hopefully they'll update their firmware to allow more characters in the password. Uh, there is a USB port apparently on the motherboard of the controller that's inside here. But if we look on the side of the machine, you will see that... Oh, okay. Didn't quite notice that. A couple of things here. I was talking about the fact that I had to go get an adapter for the SD card. So I was talking about having to get an adapter for this, but I've just realized <laughs> they have an SD slot up here. So if I take that out, I should be able to take the SD card and just... I guess it goes in upside down. Drop it in there. So yeah, you've got to be aware that it's upside down. And we've got a USB port right here as well. Micro USB, so you still couldn't stick in the uh, USB stick that came with this because it's not micro USB. Nope. It's full size USB, but you could put a cable adapter in there, no problem. Also still lets you plug in a PC or um, Octoprint or something straight into there. So that's good. Anyway, we'll have a look at how this is all put together in a separate video, like I said. And by, hopefully by that time, I will also have the uh, Wi-Fi issue sorted. So... All right, um, in summary, very easy to put together, four bolts basically, and screw in two feet, and that's done. Clip in a few power connections, which are very obvious where they go. Um, I had to replace the couplers, if you remember, because these are absolutely shot. Um, but that's something that Kaiwu have already started adopting in all their new printers, putting solid couplers in. And anybody that's gotten these faulty ones, or the old kind of coupler, they can get replacements from Kaiwu, so that's good. Um, printer overall is built like a tank. Um, very, very solid. Nice to see great big handles on the top so you can lift it and carry it between places rather than grabbing parts of the frame. Um, no real rattling from any of the frame or any loose bits or stuff like that. A little bit different getting used to the noise of the um, roller bearings on the linear rods here. And the head of course. You know, that's a nice get used to. It makes for a very... Like there's no play. I'm pushing quite hard here. There's no play that's going to matter in when you're printing. Um, like I said, the little... Ghosties seem to print pretty good. That was just a little simple half hour print. First layer. We'll do a first layer check when we do the next video on a bit more using Cura with it. And uh, try a couple of other things with it as well. And uh, what else can I say? I think for the moment that's it. As I said, we'll do the teardown. Have a look more at the wiring and the control board and things inside in a separate video as well. But for a box opening and getting it working. I know the video is long, but I like to go into details. Um, 
this is an excellent printer and if you weren't trying to record and do all the details you'd have it up and running in probably less than half an hour from opening the box uh, which is pretty good so if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you don't well don't but uh, if you have any questions about the Kaiwu uh, Taiko Tycoon printer then drop a note in the comments and I'll do my best to answer you or get um, Kaiwu themselves to answer you and I'll see you in the next video so bye for now